Hello, ladies and gents. It's part two of Newbie Tuesday, daily number fo fo. Uh, shit. Uh, seven. <laughs> Four forty-seven. Where we learn to be a better gamer. Oh man, God! If only I were in preschool again, and I could use my finger counting properly. But alas, I am a math major from Harvey Mudd College, so I can only say things like n greater than zero fingers. In part number one, we did a very simple review of a simple-ass build order structure that Progenitus came up with all by himself. He looked at a game that Stefano did where he maxed at 11 minutes and came up with a fairly clean collection of this. Oh, my camera didn't transition. Of this. Created these build order groups, filled them out with when to build units. Notice that it's mo mostly drones, drones, drones and then in the advanced, ordered some things. Maybe wrote down some exact food timings, like 14 and 16. Maybe some things like two gas in my main when the third finishes. And he played only 11 games in single player. Again, 11 games at around eight minutes a game. This will take less than 89 minutes. <laughs> Doesn't take very long, especially if you envision yourself just sort of dabbling in this a little bit throughout the course of a week. It's no time at all. But now, it's time to test it on the ladder. We're going to see crazy shit thrown at Progenitus. Huge varieties of things, and we're still going to see that skeleton crop up again and again. Now, one thing that I have not actually explained in too much detail, we, in uh, last week's daily and the week before that, the last two Fun Day Mondays, other than this one, we looked at the idea of translating a build order into this. In this daily, we're looking at executing that build order and trying it out. The one thing that I will note is that at each phase, we're literally saying, before I build two gas geysers, I make sure that I have these things done. Before I build my Evo Rochorn gas layer macro hatch, I'm going to make sure that I have completed step three, that I've completed step two. The important thing to note is that at each of these, there's a hidden check out opponent and make sure that you can step to the next phase. I didn't really say this too explicitly when I was in the midst of the last few dailies or now, but we're going to see it happen naturally. The answer is that Progenitus is going to be, whoa, up against a pylon? Well, crap. I'll just expand to my third down here. Drone kind of went out to do a little bit of scout, but we found our opponent. We see he's early expanding. Cool. Have some dr drones do some whacking away action. Cool. We still built our queen first. We got our two lings out. We forgot this overlord, but we still know about how we need to go. Come on, camera. There we go. Did anyone hear that really loud bird? I always get so excited when I hear birds. I love birds. All right, cool. We know exactly how we want to progress. So what we're going to do is we're going to speed things up. What is our first phase of build? Get these two hatches and this pool up. Cool. Right when our third finishes is about when we want to take these two gas geysers. And that's finishing up. Cool. And there's our two geysers. That was really easy. We're still following along with it quite well. Okay, cool. So we're building these queens. We're continuing along quite well. There's our third gas coming up. And then what happens next? Evo Chamber, Roach Warren, Lair, Macro Hatch. We're getting messed with a little bit. We're building some lings just in case. The lings were not exactly part of the build, but still, I want you to note that this is not the exact build order by any means. This is the skeleton. Here are some of the meat on the bones. And the ultra details, such as the skin, I guess, in this metaphor, kind of happen over time. I'm noticing that we're getting a little bit delayed on our Evo Roach Warren thing. This is what's happening right now. We've done these first three easily. Here's these two gases. There's gas number three. But we had a little bit of a scare happen. So we're getting some zerglings out. We have speed coming up. Here's a spine crawler also coming down. We might panic and build a spine crawler here as well. But then we're going to continue on just fine and dandy. Here's where some big variation comes in. Oh my god, a void ray. Oh my god, a void ray. 
We weren't accounting for this in our practices, but that's fine. We do the intuitive thing. Now we're going to see the huge benefit of having this simple skeletal structure come up. Very simple skeletal structure. We build the emergency defenses that we need to build. We are still getting a layer right on time. We still got this Evo Chamber and stuff. We're just sort of panicking and building some queens as fast as we can, but we're still getting the macro hatch. Because that is part of this build order. Evo, Roach Warren, Gas, Layer, Macro Hatch. Do we do all those? Evo Chamber, Roach Warren, Layer, Gas, Macro Hatch. Yeah, right on. We actually got all of it. We're doing the intuitive answer, throwing down a bunch of spore, um, spore crawlers. But we can do a little bit of flavor, adding this Hydralisk Den because he's still making oh so much air. But still note, very little changes with that underlying structure. We have places we want to go now. Previously we were able to get maxed at 12 minutes, but not when we're, you know, losing overlords, we're being supply blocked, when we've had to build all these spore crawlers. That's very normal. Don't obsess too much about these sorts of times. Getting Roach Warm speed, getting the attack level 1. And then an amazing and delightful thing occurs where because Progenitus has a clear sense of what's going on with his build order, he continues to get Burrow, Overlord, Speed, and at 13 minutes, he's getting ready with a gigantic max army and just one A's. Huge, overwhelming amounts of stuff. Just like Stefano. There was a total mess up where he accidentally right-clicked there. <laughs> just... Really wanted to kill that gateway in the midst of all his units being murdered. But yeah, this is looking really good for Progenitus. Some more intuitive responses. He sees Colossus, so he gets a Spire. But for a Platinum level Zerg player, look at the distribution of money and gas. It's right in line with what he'd want to do with Roach production. Still getting a Spire, continuing to flood. This is a beautiful execution. This is so great. This is fantastic. In other words, at every point in time, all we really had to do was say, hey, or do we need to do a check? Again, we're kind of doing this check out enemy. Check out enemy. Check out enemy. And at every point we say, check them out. Are we cool? Are we cool? All right, next step. All right, getting the two gas. Wait, do we need to do anything crazy? No? All right, cool. Let's go to our next step. All right, do we need to do anything crazy? No? All right, let's go to our next step. There's tons of checking that's happening throughout. We're not rushing to achieve step two right after step one's done. We want to make sure that everything's cool. And as a matter of fact, what um, we're going to do is look at a game where things do kind of go a little bit awry. Let me see this Z Newbie Tuesday game. Which is the one that I wanted to look at? Is it... Here we go. Here's a good one. So we're going to step into one that's kind of... We're going to go through it pretty quickly here. So Progenitus is talking to Echizen about manga and all this stuff. This stuff, Echizen is getting confused because Progenitus just set it out of nowhere. And of course, big props to Incognitus, who reminds me that Progenitus is an absolutely beastly magic card. Protection from everything, I bet. So in this game, Progenitus is not up against an early expander. Not at all. Is this build order style going to work or not? Well, we're still kind of going along with what we wanted to do anyways. Still building a lot of drones, still getting the same timing on the third, getting zergling speed, but it's very important not to overreact from your build order.